Terminals were first introduced to the Halo series with Halo 3. Unlike the terminals Halo fans are most familiar with these days, the Halo 3 terminals are entirely text-based, and while they can be found on any difficulty, there is some variability to their content based on difficulty. We'll discuss more about that later. For now, let's dive into where you can find these terminals. Do note that you'll have to access the second half of the terminal for these achievements to unlock. You'll see what I mean once we get into it. The first three terminals are found on the level, the Ark. The first is found just after the second encounter of the level. After the area with the incomplete AA gun and the fight with the Hunters, you'll come up this pathway with a Forerunner corridor. Rather than advancing straight through, take a left and you'll find the terminal. The second terminal is found after the first tank run. You'll come to this room where you activate a light bridge to let the UNSC forces across. Afterwards, turn around and you'll find the terminal. Note that the terminal can't be accessed until you activate the light bridge. The third terminal is found just before the room, filled with explosive Covenant batteries. You'll come to this area with a lone grunt and some Covenant batteries. The terminal is behind the door, under the walkway you're on. You don't have to clear out the next room, but if you do, when you return for the terminal, you'll find 343 Guilty Spark coming out of that room. Just a fun little easter egg. Terminals 4 through 6 are found on the level, The Covenant. The first is found in the first shield tower. When you come to this elevator, rather than going up, jump across it to this area with a couple covey carbines to find the terminal. Terminal 5 is found just after you get the Hornet. When you fly near the second tower rather than advancing, fly to the tower itself. Don't fly too far ahead, or an invisible barrier will spawn behind you, preventing you from going back. Once at the tower, land, walk into this hallway, and you'll find the terminal just around the corner. Terminal 6 is found in the third tower in the same manner as Terminal 4. You'll come to the elevator, but rather than activating it, jump across to the opposite side, and find the terminal hidden away. The final of the Forerunner terminals is found at the start of the level, Halo. Load up the level and walk through the cave like you normally would. When you get to this drop, rather than going down, turn right and jump onto this Forerunner beam. Walk until you come into this hall, turn left, and you'll find the terminal. In addition to the seven text terminals, there's a hidden eighth, the Cortana terminal, found on the level Cortana. You'll come to this large circular room after dropping down a hole in the ceiling. Clear the room to make things easier if you wish. Go to the right and you'll find an entrance to get under the main platform. In the back, near a gravity hammer, is the 8th terminal. And that covers the Halo 3 terminal locations. As with other games in the collection, the terminals have achievements attached to them. The first terminal gets you the Rising Waters achievement, which references the biblical flood for which Noah built his ark. And just like in the Bible, the Ark of the Halo franchise was built to survive the deluge that was the Parasitic Flood. The achievement title is also appropriate since this is the first terminal, the contents of which are diving into the Forerunner Flood War. The second terminal gets you the Inundation Achievement, a word which literally means flooding. 
The third terminal gets you the Before the Fire achievement, which references a line from the terminal itself. When you find this terminal's location, you can immediately go to it, but if you clear out the next room, then go back, you'll find 343 Guilty Spark accessing the terminal. When the terminal is loaded up, the first part is a conversation between Spark and the monitor of the Ark, 000 Tragic Solitude. In that terminal, Solitude refers to itself as All Our Makers Once Held Dear, Alexandria Before the Fire, referencing of course the fire that burned down the Great Library of Alexandria. The fourth terminal gets you the Tipping Point achievement, appropriate since this terminal details Mendicant Bias deciding to join the Flood. The fifth terminal gets you the Unto Dust achievement, which references Genesis 319 of the King James Bible, which reads, Dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. In the context of the terminal, this references the various declarations from Mendicant Bias as it begins fighting with the Flood against the Forerunners. The Forerunners rose up, and now they'll be beaten back, returned to dust. The sixth terminal gets you the Babbling Dead achievement, which could be said to reference the terminals in their entirety. All these entries come from beings long since dead and are in reference to fighting the Flood, which you could call the Babbling Dead. And the seventh of the main terminals gets you the Sword and Shield achievement. This reference is multi-layered. First you have the line from Cortana in the Halo 3 announcement trailer, I am your shield, I am your sword. Then there's the relationship between Halos and Shield Worlds, with Shield Worlds obviously being a shield and Halos being the sword. Further, this terminal, found on a Halo or sword, when accessed on Legendary, has a final message from Mendicant Bias who talks about keeping the path ahead stable. This is in reference to Mendicant Bias being the reason that Forward Unto Dawn is ripped in half during its return to Earth and why the Chief arrives at Requiem, a Shield World. We'll talk a bit more about that later. Speaking of Legendary, viewing the 7th terminal on Legendary to see that final message from Mendicant Bias gets you the Whispers Across the Galaxy achievement, which would seem to reference Mendicant speaking to the Chief via the terminals. The terminals actually have hidden audio and messages. The 8th terminal, aka the Cortana terminal, will get you the Coin's Fault achievement, which is a line Cortana says in the terminal itself. It was the Coin's Fault! That line is itself a reference to Halo the Fall of Reach and the first meeting between Dr. Halsey and John, the future Master Chief. Halsey flips a coin and has John call the results as a test to see if he's fit to join the Spartan 2 program. John grabs the coin out of the air, calling the result as he does. He's correct, he's chosen for the program, and he's allowed to keep the coin. Finally, finding all eight terminals on any difficulty gets you the No Stone Unturned achievement, a simple play on the search for the terminals themselves. To note, you don't need to view the seventh or any terminal on Legendary or get the Whispers Across the Galaxy achievement to get No Stone Unturned. Just access the eight terminals. And with the achievement titles covered, let's dive into the lore of the terminals a bit. Like with future terminals, there is a bit of a through line, a central theme that ties them all together. Though unlike the video terminals, the Halo 3 terminals are able to cover a wider breadth of topics and small side stories, you could say. The first part of any terminal usually covers some analysis of Flood tactics or plans to fight the Flood, though there are two exceptions to this. Terminal 3 opens with 343 Guilty Spark conversing with the Ark's monitor 000 Tragic Solitude, as we would later learn, and Terminal 7 has a message from a Forerunner named Filial Devotion to his father. Filial writes about how he feels he can't hide behind a shield of privilege when so many others are fighting the Flood. On easy through heroic difficulty, players will be rerouted to a new destination in the terminal which has records of conversations between the Didact and the Librarian, the Librarian as she catalogs species for the conservation effort, ultimately ending up on Earth and building the portal we see in Halo 3, while the Didact fights the Flood and prepares to fire the Halo Array. The one exception to this is Terminal 5, which has a unique message on each difficulty. These messages are all basically mendicant bias, declaring its defection to the Flood and against the Forerunners. In addition, many times when the player is being rerouted, there are hidden messages from mendicant. When accessing terminals on Legendary, players will get the same text in the first half of the terminal, but different messages in the latter halves. 
For Terminals 1 through 4, players get incomplete transcripts of discussions between Mendicant Bias and the Gravemind, or the Primordial as he's referred to in the Forerunner Saga. In Terminal 6, players get a long, detailed log of the final battle between Mendicant Bias and Offensive Bias. Offensive Bias was a new Contender Class AI created after Mendicant went rogue, one that wasn't allowed as much freedom as Mendicant and wouldn't be able to defect. The two AI fight in a massive space battle, offensive buying time for the activation of the Halo Array. Once it fires, Mendicant's Flood Augmented Fleet is quickly defeated by Offensive, who captures the AI and delivers it to the Ark, where it will be sealed away. Those events are actually further expounded upon in Halo Rebirth, an audio sequel to Halo Silentium. Terminal 7, when accessed on Legendary, reveals the final message from Mendicant Bias, as discussed earlier. Mendicant notes how it will again betray a former master, the Flood in this case, to aid the Master Chief, and that it will have its masters, the Forerunners, know that it has changed. For years, fans speculated that this meant Mendicant was the one to redirect Chief to Requiem, and years later, Halo Mythos actually confirmed it. To note though, Mendicant didn't know that the Didact would try to wipe out humanity. It thought it would just prove, hey guys, I've changed. There are further cool details in these terminals, one of my favorite being how certain text is contained in orange brackets, indicating that these particular words or sentences aren't direct translations, but the closest approximation in the reader's language. And of course, the Forerunner translation software is so advanced that it can easily incorporate idioms from a reader's language into the translation, such as the Garden of Eden or the Maginot Line. At the time of Halo 3's release, these terminals gave fans the closest looks we'd had yet to Forerunner society and the perils of the Forerunner Flood War. Even in a post-Forerunner saga world, they remain a fascinating part of Halo's lore and history. I just wish it were easier to read the first parts of each terminal in-game. There's basically a set period of time you can view the first half of the terminals before it redirects you. Luckily though, there's an online recreation of the Halo 3 terminals, thanks to the folks over at halo.bungie.org, so you can read everything at your leisure if you need, or you can read it on Halopedia. I've left a link to that recreation in the description box below. In addition, the Halo 3 terminals in the Master Chief Collection sadly lack a number of interesting visuals that were present in the Xbox 360 version of the game and in the online recreation I mentioned. I hope that one day these can be fixed as they add an extra layer of intrigue and mystery to the terminals that is otherwise absent in the MCC version. But that's all for now. What do you think of the Halo 3 Terminals? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, liking, and leaving a comment. These all greatly help out the channel. If you want more things to hunt in Halo 3, I also have a guide for Halo 3 Skulls, both the original 13 that you can find in Campaign, and the 6 bonus skulls from the Mythic Map Pack maps.